What's up YouTube and welcome back to the LS powered bulldoze. So as you guys can see the truck is no longer in my garage. It is out running. I just wanted to do a couple updates for you guys on this truck. Um, first things first, let's switch over. Look under the hood here. There's a few things that have changed since my original video on this truck. So Looking under the hood, you can see there is the LS. Now the wiring, don't judge me, it still needs to be cleaned up, but I'm not done with it. I have plans in the future for the wiring. So uh, stand by one second, I'll switch the camera over, we'll look in there. All right, you guys, so here's the engine. Like I said, the wiring needs to be touched up. But the biggest thing and most important change I've done on this truck since the update is this hose right here. And this is the power steering hose. It's quite high pressure. Uh, originally, I was running a 6AN line to that, and I had to change it to a hydraulic fitting. Um, and you can just get those at most of your local hardware or uh, auto parts stores. They'll make you one up. I'm still using the original 6AN fittings that go into the Ford box and the GM pump because the flares on JIC and 6AN are the same. So that works out pretty good couple other cha changes that have happened to the truck now I know the engine's dirty I've probably put uh, six or seven thousand miles on it since I um, swapped it but uh, it has a sloppy stage 2 cam in it now and that actually changes the way the truck runs quite a bit as well as that it has Dietz Works injectors uh, they're quite a bit bigger I can't remember how big they are off the top of my head 44 pound maybe I don't remember 48 uh, I like double the size of the stock injectors um, and I had to tune all that stuff as well. Aside from that, the fuel system has been updated. Now has a fuel cell in the bed of the truck. Um, ignore all the other stuff back here. It's uh, truck actually gets used as a truck, believe it or not. Um, but the fuel system, the line runs, there's two lines here. This is the output from the tank, return back into the tank. They run down under the bed into a large fuel pump. Uh, that's a Walbro pump down there, a couple filters, and then they just run back up into here and uh, they go from the 10 a.n down to the 6 a.n 6 a.n is all you really need but that tank came with 10 a.n and it's not going to hurt anything to be a little bit bigger so that's what i did there um let's uh i'll set my uh camera over here and i'll start her up for you guys so you can hear it run Once again, it's uh, pretty well done. We'll go in for a little drive test here, show you guys how it drives. Um, if to excuse the truck just being like super dirty, that is, uh, like I said, it still gets used as a truck. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off here. And you can see it uh, runs and drives pretty good. The uh, torque converter in it is a 3600 RPM stall torque converter, stall converter in it and it really smooths out everything on the bottom end. The only downside is, is it takes a little more RPM to get the truck moving, especially when it's cold. When it's good and warmed up, it drives pretty much like a stock torque converter, but it uh, gets right after it when you uh, give it the old throttle here. So let's get her shifted down and we'll see what she does. She hasn't been running super great today because it's been colder than normal and it's not really tuned in for it, but a couple more things guys um just so you guys know i mean i'm driving down the road right now i'm doing 60 65 miles an hour and uh obviously the truck is driving absolutely great going through some weird construction right here so that's kind of frustrating but uh with all the rumble strips and whatnot, but um, so I'm driving down the road. I'm doing 70 right now. The truck runs and drives amazing. Um, it really made this truck just way better to drive. Now, I know it may be on your mind and what kind of fuel economy are you getting or am I getting with this thing? And I'll be real with you guys, I drove this truck from North Idaho here to Portland, Oregon, 
back um, this summer and my average fuel economy for the entire trip was 17 miles to the gallon. Now when you consider the truck has huge injectors, sloppy stage 2 cam, it's shaped like a brick. I mean it really, that's respectable numbers. I mean the stock 302 got around that mileage or maybe slightly less with the AOD trans in uh sorry about that but it uh had like a quarter of the horsepower that this engine has right and that was just my average fuel economy i just tracked it all the way down and back there was some stops where i was getting 18 and a half you know a couple of legs on the journey where i was over 18 and there was some where i was around 15 16 especially down through the columbia gorge there where i had a huge headwind that was uh, really really bad and then um, overall the truck is, uh, I mean, it's absolutely worth doing the swap. I know that uh, I talked to you guys about cost on the last one. It is not a cheap swap like everyone thinks it is. Um, and what killed me on the last swap was, uh, I guess, just the prices of the parts I had to buy that didn't work or didn't fit, and I had to return or take back a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff ended up getting destroyed or mangled or just didn't work out or I bought stuff I didn't need never got to take or return but <clears throat> there's a lot of money in that that's what the purpose of the previous video was was to kind of help you guys not make those same mistakes because there's not a whole lot of info out there on LS swap bulldozers and uh, aside from just doing an engine swap which is basically you know they're all the same you just weld in new motor mounts and away you go right new trans mount um, but the biggest thing is, is you got to hook all the GM stuff to the Ford systems. Uh, the biggest and hardest one, the one that stumped me the longest amount of time was the power steering. And like I said, don't use an AN line on that. They don't hold enough pressure. Uh, GM uses a high pressure power steering pump. So make sure you use an actual hydraulic line. Um, and I think that's a number six hydraulic, which would be a three eighths line. <laughs> if I remember correctly, and I know that the fittings are number six JICs. So uh, one's a 45, one's a 90, and you do have to get them, you know, you have your 90 and then your 45 on the other end, but you do have to get them a, a twisted right so that everything looks back up. So when you get all your fittings and stuff, you just kind of got to mark them up. You know, I used a Sharpie and marked the hose. I marked the... Um, fittings and then I took it, you know, I bought all the stuff and then took it back down to the store and kind of crimp the ends for me because I don't have a hydraulic crimper here at the house but, um, or in my garage. But yeah, so it's pretty easy to do, but that's the biggest thing. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, uh, that mistake almost cost me the truck by running a van fitting and van line because uh, it was fine just normal driving like I am now, but as soon as I'd get on the throttle and give it a few RPM to blow that line, and I actually blew the line right onto the header and lit the truck completely on fire. So that was super sketchy. I mean, giant fireball goes out from underneath the truck in the middle of the night, truck's on fire. Luckily, I carry a fire extinguisher in the truck with me at all times because, uh, well, you guys know how it is with old stuff. And uh, I never trust myself. Uh, for whatever reason i probably should but i don't so but anyway after that i went to the hydraulic line and i had zero issues with the hydraulic line and uh, the truck now has let me just double check here 128 hours on it that i put on it driving and then um let me look at my trips here I think I've got 4,800 miles on it. I think if that's correct. I thought I had more, so maybe uh, maybe I reset the trip at one point. But uh, I thought I had uh, like 6k on it. But <coughs> anyway, I hope this helps you guys. And uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And I hope you can hear me because uh, this truck is kind of loud. So. Yeah, the old uh, bufflers tend to not handle max horsepower or max RPMs in this engine. It blew the old uh, glass packs right out. 
So uh, those are probably uh, need to be changed at some point. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. If you like and subscribe, and I'll uh, make you guys some more if everything. Uh, if you guys want more videos, so leave me a comment. Catch you later.